Hello, I'm Mimi. I'm a digital illustrator and today I'm going to have a little craft afternoon and do a Q&A with you guys because I asked in a community post for you to ask some questions and I'm going to pick out some to answer today. I have some crafts and casual drawings that I thought it would be nice to work on while we chat so feel free to do your own drawing as well and we can have a crafty afternoon together. So let's take a look at some of your questions. The first question is from Bakasumi and they want to know, did you have a day job before starting your art journey seriously? And if yes, did you quit it to focus more on your career? The answer to this is a little complicated because my art journey isn't very straightforward, but yes, I had a job, but I was working freelance as a graphic designer for myself, so I wasn't always working full-time hours. I go into more detail about it in my art journey video, but basically I had been doing contract work on feature films full time. And then when there was a pause in jobs, I would work freelance, but was at the point in 2019 when I wanted to start transitioning into illustrating. So I played around a little bit with some drawing. And then in 2020, when the pandemic hit, I had less freelance work and it all just clicked. And I realized that this is the time to make illustration work for me. It felt like the world was paused for a little while there, so that was the catalyst to get myself into gear and give it everything I had as much as I could around the little bit of freelance design work that I was still doing. I was actually still doing freelance graphic design jobs until last year, 2021, when I had built up enough income from illustration to be able to stop doing graphic design work. So the next question says, any advice about starting to learn illustration with the aim to make it a full-time job when you have a nine to five job already? I think it's a difficult thing to do and I don't want to make it seem like it isn't because you only have so much energy and capacity each day so it's really tough. But I do really believe that you can make a job from illustration while you have another full-time job. I looked at building my art career as if I was doing a three-year university degree which is how lots of people get into a new career and learn a new skill set and it seems like a realistic time frame to build something. And just like with a university degree, students often study full time and then work on the side part time to pay their way through uni. But sometimes it's the opposite and some students study part time because they have a full time job or other responsibilities already. And it just takes longer to study part time. So their degree might take five or six years instead of three. I think it's the same thing with teaching yourself new art skills or building an art career from scratch. If you can put full time energy into it and work hard on growing your skills and setting up income streams, then in around three years, you'll hopefully be earning a graduate income from the art job that you've built for yourself. But if you're already working full time and only have evenings and weekends available, it might take you five or six years to achieve the same thing. So keep working at it, make your illustration studies a priority for yourself and set out a reasonable time frame for when you expect to be earning from your art. I'm not saying that it will definitely take five years, but it probably will take a while and that's okay. I think it's a difficult thing to do, especially when you have a busy nine to five job, but often the most valuable achievements are the most difficult ones. Okay, so this next question is from Annie and they asked, how did you start your art career and what was your first step? This is a big question and I don't really know that I had a first step. It was more like a series of false starts and detours, but there was a point with this Mimi Moo illustration journey when something clicked in my mind and I realized that to be an illustrator, I needed to start acting like one and illustrators draw a lot. So that's what I started doing. I realized that I didn't need anyone else's permission to consider myself an artist and my only requirement for me to identify myself as an artist was that I created art regularly and for me that meant most days of the week even if it was just for 15 minutes. That mindset shift was honestly the biggest difference for me between not creating much art because I didn't take myself seriously and realizing that I could make a job out of this if I treated myself as a serious illustrator and just spent loads of time drawing. So I drew every weekday for a year and that's what set the foundation for my skills and where my career is today. Rainbow Swell Z asked, have you ever felt like quitting when things don't work out? If so, how did you deal with it? I'm not sure that I've wanted to quit yet on this current chapter of my journey over the past two years, but previously with other creative endeavors, I definitely have. And it's mostly been because I was impatient and expected to be earning money from it faster than I was because all of the videos I was seeing of people doing similar things were about how they made a successful business super quickly and that was just never the case for me. 
So this time around, when I started illustrating seriously in 2020 and started building Mimimoo Illustration, I expected it to take about three years for me to be earning a salary from my illustrations that was anywhere close to what I could be earning from my previous graphic design skills. And so far, I'm a little over two years into that journey and earning about minimum wage, so I'd say that that timeline was pretty accurate. So I think because of that realistic expectation this time that it's going to take literally years for me to be in a position that I'd like to be, I haven't wanted to quit because I'm not at the three year mark yet and I'm on track. There have definitely been months where income or engagement stats were trending downwards and it's disheartening but I have to remember to step back and look at things quarterly because as long as things are trending upwards over a few months, even if it's just a little bit, then that's positive growth. A bad day, week or month doesn't necessarily mean that things aren't working out overall. I had a couple of questions about studying art that were all a variation of, do you recommend studying art at a university to get a degree? This question comes up quite a lot because I get that university is a big decision to make. I don't think it's necessary to study art at university in my experience, but I also don't think it's a negative thing at all. I did study some visual art subjects at university but only as a minor and it didn't really have much impact on my art career for me. If you want to have the university experience then go for it. It's very social and you'll build a strong network and probably have really great art mentors. But you could also spend that time teaching yourself without all the written assignments and without the student debt. I'd recommend going with your gut if you're drawn to university or college and you think that structure would be beneficial for you, then that's perfect. But if you don't like the idea of it, then don't feel pressured. I will say that either way, it'll take a lot of practice, study and time to develop your art skills, whether you're at uni or teaching yourself. If you're teaching yourself rather than going to uni, then just make sure that you give it as much attention and energy as you would do if you were studying for formal qualifications. So Gabriella has asked, do you have days in which you don't want to work or doubt if what you are doing is what you want to keep doing? I definitely have days when I don't want to work, but I don't ever want to stop what I'm doing completely. I think I've surprised myself that two years into building this art business, I haven't lost my passion and excitement for it, which shows me that it's what I want to be doing for the foreseeable future. Some days I have less energy or don't feel like drawing or writing a script, but it's always been temporary and just because I need to take a break and do something else. I try to be flexible in my schedule so that if I really don't feel like drawing one day, then I can work on something else instead that I'm more motivated for. Or I can just take the day off and push everything back a day if I really need to. Even when you're doing something that you've worked hard for and that you love, I don't think you need to feel like you have to be excited about it every single day. I love my job overall, but it's still a job and sometimes I don't love doing it on that particular day and that's okay because I'm not a robot and my energy isn't going to be the same every single day. So the next question is, what are your anxieties and insecurities in your art journey and how did you overcome those? This is an important question and I recently made a really big video addressing lots of common artist fears and a lot of my own as well. In the beginning, I was worried that my art wasn't good enough to share with anyone and I was a bit embarrassed about sharing that publicly and telling friends and family that I was pursuing illustration, especially because I had tried building an income from my art before and hadn't been very successful with it. I just had to decide that those fears weren't as important to me as giving myself the opportunity to build my dream job and that the worst case scenario from all of my fears and insecurities wasn't really such a big deal. I removed all of my expectations that my art was going to be really good every time because the only way to get better is to practice and to make art that isn't that great but you learn something every single time. But the insecurities don't always disappear completely or they might be replaced by new ones because it's natural to have fears. I just have to make sure that they don't hold me back from what I want to be doing. More recently, I have different fears to overcome, but I've learned that if I can overcome one fear, then I can overcome them all. So I'm pretty determined to not let them become a big deal. As my audience grows, I have more people watching what I do, so I worry that if I fail at something, it'll be a lot more publicly than when I was starting out. 
I worry that even though I'm working really hard to be successful within my own metrics, that people will discredit my success when they only see part of my story. And I still wonder if my art is good enough because it's so simple. These days, those fears or insecurities just sit in the corner because they're not a good enough reason to stop pursuing my goals and they're really just not very important to me. The next question is from Ali's Mindful Art and they'd like to know any tips on time management slash productivity for someone that's trying to get their art career started. My advice with time management would be to find the system that works for you because I've learned that we're all so different when it comes to being organized and don't feel bad if what works for somebody else just doesn't stick for you. There are loads of different systems out there and it also depends on how strict your schedule needs to be. So I would recommend watching lots of videos about how other people structure their time and what tools they use and try a few out for yourself to see what works for you. At the moment, I really like having a big digital to-do list and then just choosing a few things from that list every day to write down on a piece of paper in front of me so I can just focus on a few things at once and that helps prevent me from being overwhelmed by all of the things to do. At other times, I've really enjoyed using a calendar but sort of fizzled out from using that. So I would also say that it's okay if you transition to a different system, you don't have to pick something and stick with it forever. Something I would definitely recommend in general is to be realistic about how long things take you and how much time you have to spend on things. Because often our stress and disappointment comes from a disconnect of what we're expecting versus what actually happens. If you expect yourself to draw for two hours every day, but realistically you only have one hour free, then you'll just be disappointed with yourself and feel behind when you can't hit that two hour expectation, which isn't going to make you feel good about it. And if you're anything like me, you'll probably lose your motivation for it entirely. But if you set your expectations at something that you can reasonably achieve, then you'll feel good about ticking it off and getting it done, even if it means needing to be a little bit patient in the long run. As for productivity, find what gets you motivated and in the zone. I have a mental list of go-to things to try when I need to get in the zone and be productive with something. And I have a few options because the same thing doesn't work for me every time because I'm really someone who needs variety. Sometimes I'm really productive when I'm playing music while I work. Sometimes it's when I go out to work at the library. Sometimes I need to distract my brain with a podcast or the TV on in the background while I draw. And sometimes I need to look for inspiration or look back at how far I've come to get really motivated to keep going. So find what gets you excited or motivated and set up your environment to help you succeed and be productive. The next question is from Azura Sky and they said, what advice would you give someone who feels that they aren't good at drawing? How do you know you'll get better if you keep going? Firstly, I think there's usually a big gap between how we perceive our own art and how others perceive our art because we're usually our own toughest critics. But also, we often aren't good at drawing when we start out, just like we aren't usually good at roller skating the first time we try. It's a skill to learn and in the same way you would need to fall over a few times to get better at roller skating, you need to make some art that isn't very good before you can learn what you want to change and get better at and that's totally okay. You'll only get better with practice but you can also help your progress by watching tutorials or going to art classes. Keep in mind as well that you probably won't get better in a linear way. It might sometimes feel like you're taking two steps forward and one step backwards. So if you're looking at your progress, make sure you look at the bigger picture to see how far you've come. Drawing is a skill to be learned and there is no reason why you can't be just as good at it as your favorite artists if you put in the energy and practice, but it will take time and that's just part of the process. I think a key thing as well is not comparing yourself to other artists, especially if they're younger than you, because we seem to have this competition in our own minds of needing to be better at something than people younger than us, but we don't know how many hours of their lives they've spent practicing. And some people just have a natural talent for things that helps them pick up the skills quickly, but they're just the same skills that anybody can learn. You will get better at drawing if you keep practicing and keep learning, but a big part of it is also believing in yourself and allowing yourself to make mistakes along the way. 
Okay, this next question would like to know how to start learning new skills and keep ourselves motivated to continue learning. I think it's a lot easier to start new things than it is to keep practicing them. So you're not alone if you feel like you've lost motivation after the initial stage of excitement. Have a think though about what it was that motivated you in the beginning and what's stopping you from continuing. Why don't you feel like picking up a pencil and drawing something today? There are so many hurdles to overcome when we're learning something new and it's hard. So I don't blame our brains for not wanting to keep it up. But being aware of what those hurdles are can help us overcome them. Learning art is a big journey. So arm yourself with the resources that you need for the trip. Feel demotivated because you don't know what to draw? Find some drawing prompts and look at Pinterest for inspiration. Struggling to draw faces? Watch some tutorials. Embarrassed because you don't think your art is very good yet? Draw on scrap paper that nobody ever needs to see. We don't need to find the solutions to all of our problems on our own, so arm yourself with the tools to help you through. Also make it easy for yourself to maintain a habit. Keep your sketchbook and pencils where you can see them in a place where it's easy to grab them and doodle something for 15 minutes while you have your coffee. If you like drawing on your iPad in front of the TV at night, put it next to the couch and have the charger somewhere nearby as well so that it's a visual reminder and easy to pick up and draw something. We can't rely on our willpower to maintain a habit all the time. I know I can't. I have to make it easy and remove as many hurdles as possible for me to actually do something consistently. And learning doesn't always need to be a big deal. It can be a casual thing on days where we don't have a lot of time or energy. So make it easy for yourself and try not to expect too much all at once. Now I had a few variations on this next question, which is how did you decide what to draw slash create, what to draw when you're not feeling inspired? What worked for me and still does is going for a walk and just looking around and seeing all of the interesting details and thinking about what I could draw from those. And that usually gives me some ideas, which is why a lot of my art is influenced by nature. You could also join an art challenge on social media or find some written prompts. I have a printable list of prompts that you're welcome to download for free or pay what you like for if you're in a position where you can and you just pick out some random prompts from each category and see if you can draw something from them. Or you can just look through the list and see what sparks an idea for you. You can really use them how you like. I also enjoy browsing Pinterest or making Pinterest boards of things that inspire me and they can help me a lot when I'm not feeling inspired to come up with my own ideas. I actually had a couple of questions about newsletters along the lines of, do you think newsletters are a good way of interacting with people? Social media these days makes it harder to interact with my audience. As far as I can tell, I think newsletters would be a good way of interacting with your audience because whenever I look into content marketing or growing an audience online, there's always lots of suggestions to grow an email list and put out a newsletter. I don't have an email newsletter and I don't think I'm really signed up to many, but I post one every month on to my Patreon and I think they're a nice way of giving people an insight into what you're up to or just providing some value to them in any way that you'd like to use your newsletter. I'm not sure how easy it is for an audience to interact back with a newsletter, but if you're curious about it, then it's worth giving it a go. And if you feel like it would be a nice way for you to share something extra with a select part of your audience who opt in, then go for it. Everything is an experiment and if it doesn't work out, then you don't have to commit to it forever. Okay, so there were a few questions about social media that basically said, how do you grow on social media and how do you find your first followers? When you're starting out on social media, it can be really hard to get seen. So I recommend focusing on ways to be seen by more people to start building your community. Join art challenges, experiment with hashtags that are trending and have a lot of engagement for accounts of your size and make a real effort to engage with other artists on the platform. I used to spend about half an hour at least a few days a week seeking out new accounts that I really liked the look of and that were maybe a similar size to mine and I would leave nice genuine comments on their art and maybe send them a message, not to be insincere and just get a follow back, uh, but to make an art friend. Build a connection with people and it's more likely that they'll also engage with your content when you post. I have a whole video about how I grew my Instagram account to 25,000 followers, but basically be genuine and build real connections with people so that you have an engaged community. 
These are real people if you exclude the bot accounts, so treat them like you would a real person. The next question is from Danielle C and they would like to know, how do you think artists can adapt to regain engagement and grow on Instagram without becoming a real monster? Instagram doesn't feel very social these days. This is such a good question and I almost wrote an entire video on this topic this week because it's a big deal at the moment. And I agree that Instagram is feeling less social and more like you need to post reels. I expect social media platforms to change and for algorithms to change, but it does feel like Instagram is doing too much too fast and losing what a lot of people want from the platform. In saying that though, I haven't posted a reel in a long time and although my posts aren't shown to as many people as they used to be, I still enjoy connecting with the people who do see my posts and I don't feel like I have to post reels to still enjoy the platform. I'm only posting about once a week at the moment, but earlier in the year I was posting a few times a week and my reach was definitely higher than when I was posting a lot more. So if I wanted to increase my reach right now, I would probably make an effort to post more often and really pay attention to which of those posts perform well to see if I can make more posts like that. I would consider what makes people want to engage with my posts. Why would somebody like, comment or save what I've shared? And then I would see if I can encourage more of that as long as it's in a genuine way, maybe by asking a question people would want to answer or by posting something that makes people feel really good or by hosting an art challenge. It does take a lot of energy to grow on social media because algorithms are hungry and they want lots of content from you. So it does kind of need to be a priority if we want strong results. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of artists move to other platforms outside of Instagram that don't require so much from us because a lot of artists can't post several times a week and it's not nice to feel like they're being punished for that. So I don't think you need to post reels on Instagram if you don't want to. There might be a higher chance for more immediate growth there as it sounds like that's what Instagram is leaning into at the moment because they want a piece of the TikTok pie. But a lot of people still only look at posts and that's what I mainly look at too. When I'm trying to grow on Instagram, something that really helps me is focusing on the community and the real human parts as much as possible because those are the things that motivate me to show up often. I chat a lot in DMs, respond to comments and comment on other people's posts and that's probably the most fulfilling part of the platform for me anyway. The more I focus on the numbers, the less motivated I am and then I'm less likely to post and then it's a downward spiral. It's easy to get caught up in the negative stuff and don't get me wrong, I'd prefer if Instagram stopped trying to be TikTok and just let Reels be a side thought and prioritize posts still. But if I wanna use that platform, I have to get out of it what I can and use it in a way that works for me within their algorithm. Maybe another platform will pop up that serves us in a way that the old Instagram did and we'll all migrate to that. But for now, I think use it for what you get out of it. That brings us into the next question, which is how can I stay motivated and keep my passion in drawing when I'm not growing on social media? I guess I kind of answered this a little bit in the last question, and I think you should focus less on the numbers and more on real human engagement. Humans need connection, so see if you can create some friendships on Instagram by engaging with other people's art and some of those people, not all of them, will start engaging with your art too and suddenly you have a little back and forth support buddy. It's important to know why you're on social media and what you want to get out of it. And is your passion for art tied up in external validation like Instagram likes and follows and what other people think? If you enjoy making art, then make it for yourself first and share it with others second. It still might be disappointing to not be growing on social media, but if your passion for art doesn't rely on what an algorithm thinks, then you can keep creating for your own enjoyment. An algorithm doesn't know how much passion you have. It doesn't know how good your art is or how much joy it brings you. It only knows numbers and graphs and how many people made the effort to comment on what you posted. It's pretty rare that I will definitively tell anyone to not do something, but please don't put the value of your art in the hands of a social media platform because it cannot know what value your art has. Your passion is yours. It does not belong to Instagram. 
Okay, and the last question I'll answer today is how did you start your YouTube journey? Was it scary to post slash make the first video? And how did you get over that fear? It's always a bit scary to start something new, but it's also really exciting. I knew that YouTube would be a great way for me to share my thoughts with my community beyond just posting illustrations on Instagram. So it was a platform that I was interested in from the beginning and I actually posted my first video the same month that I started posting daily on Instagram. In the beginning, I was just sharing real-time drawing videos or time lapses of what I was creating, partly because I wanted to document my journey from the beginning and partly because it was the easiest type of video that I could think of to make. The whole process of starting a YouTube channel was definitely made less scary by just starting with the easiest thing, knowing that I would slowly develop my content from there. I didn't even have text on my video straight away and it wasn't until the following year that I did any voiceover at all, so for me it was a slow progression of skills. I really just wanted to start building a foundation for a YouTube channel so that I could learn how to navigate YouTube before eventually starting to create the kind of videos that you see on this channel now. Also in the beginning there weren't many people watching so there wasn't much pressure and that helps a lot to know that if I make a big mistake that only a few people will see it. So don't feel like you need to have all of the skills or tools straight away to get started with something, there's always the opportunity to learn as you go. So this has turned into quite a long video, so I'll leave it there. Thank you so much for your questions and having a little crafting session with me. If you'd like to help my channel grow, you can simply give this video a like, leave me a comment below or subscribe if you haven't already for more art videos because I would love to share more with you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.